being from this area is unique. You know, I think growing up, you don't realize how precious it is until you get older. You really don't. You don't. You know, because you it's you're, you're native to it, and you think it's normal. I learned from my grandfather. I passed on to my sons and and daughters, and now a couple couple grandsons. My father was an active bayman. My dad was always jamming on either the banjo or the guitar. My great great grandfather did this for a living. My dad was a carpenter, and he always was making things. My mom was a, a children's book illustrator. I started shaping surfboards for myself because I wanted to ride things differently. I saw someone with the basket one day, and I said, wow, that's beautiful. She goes, oh, I made that. And I said, what? OK, you can make that. When I was a teenager, I painted a tomato sign that said Tucker Tom. I hung it on the fence, and people throughout high school knew me as Tucker Tom. And, and now I have a display in the actual seaport. So I feel like I'm still Tucker Tom, just on another level. Four years ago, I was here at the Tuckerton Seaport and in, inquired about uh, if blacksmithing was an option here. There's two fish made out of shovels mounted to a brake rotor and cattails. Um, the week before I built them, those shovels were in use by the guys I work with. And if you look, there's actually still dirt on some of those shovels. Barnegat Bay Sneak Box, when it was built, it was built to, to ride on top of the water, so you, they were rowed because there was no motors. They sailed, you know. The Barnegat Bay sneak box mainly was Jersey Barnegat Bay. This hollow-bodied surfboard I made is a 1930s design made by Tom Blake. It was the first hollow board commercially available, patented and planned, where you could make it yourself. Some of it is basically, uh, you know, doing, doing what you feel at the moment and, and with the materials you have. Pretty much a normal person that has some type of skill and designs things out of their own mind. That's what makes it fun. It's, I, I don't do it professionally, so I can do what I want to do. This is my hobby that kind of sets my mind free and allows me to relax. This is nice to be able to come out here and have a vision in my mind and interact with the people that are coming by asking questions about the craft. Anybody can be an artist. Do we all have to be a superstar? No. Do we, we can all enjoy music and art. It's for folks. We are able to highlight people who otherwise wouldn't have a platform for it. So we're able to just provide that for them. And in doing so, they are getting their name out and they're getting uh, recognized in this area. And for us, that's just a really nice way to contribute to everything that's going on here. We're a family. We're a folk art family in the sense that we make things with our hands. We share the local customs. People love to work with their hands. And it's nice and peaceful. And when you get done, you have something to show for it.